Hello and welcome to the Crochet Business School podcast. I'm Kelly Thomas, the Crochet Profit Queen, and I'm going to show you how you can make a living from your crochet while avoiding the burnout and being able to make what you want and when you want. Why you must test your patterns every time. So when you're writing your own patterns, one of the essential steps that you have to take is to get your pattern tested. Before you publish it, you need to get other crocheters to make it to make sure that there's no mistakes, to make sure that you've included all the information that is needed for someone else to recreate your design exactly, and to make sure it just all makes sense and that you haven't miss something that someone with not as much skill as you would need to make that pattern make sense. Testing is essential because as skilled as you are, the people making your pattern may not have ex as much crochet experience. They may not know how to decipher instructions that may be a written in a more advanced way. And when we are so kind of caught up in our own design and when we know what it's supposed to mean, we cannot realize that we've just not made sense. It's a case of not being able to see the wood for the trees. Because we know what we expect to see as the designer because we've already made it, we haven't made it as clear as it needs to be on paper. It doesn't matter how big or small your pattern is, how simple or complex it is, you should always test. And it's not always about spotting mistakes, sometimes it's just about having a bit of ambiguity in there about the instructions. Sometimes the questions your testers come back and ask you tells you that you need to explain better. When I'm getting my own patterns tested, I always get questions from my testers. And those questions tell me that my instructions are not clear enough. I tend to write my patterns for um, beginners and of those who need more help for their patterns um, in, in making them. So I have to include a lot of instructions for beginners. So I tend to get my patterns tested by a mix of skill levels. I'll have some people who are more advanced and I'll have people who are more at the beginner level. And what they come back and ask me can tell me more than them just pointing out mistakes. So there's two levels to your testing. Mistakes can include spelling mistakes, um, not having the right stitch counts, um, missing out information about uh, the amount of yarn needed, little things like that, which do make a big difference and definitely needs to be corrected and added in, but also just how clear the instructions are. They may come back and say that the pictures I've included don't quite show the detail they need enough which is great feedback so then I can go and take new and better photos and the reason that I'm not spotting these things is because I know what I expect to see because I know what I'm doing I'm more my skill level is greater than those I am writing the patterns for and it's so easy to forget what we needed to know when we were just starting out. This is why you should always test. Because what people, other people see is not always what we have actually written. We write at our skill level and then we have to expand. But the other thing is, is when you're writing the pattern itself at the time as you're designing, you tend to write it as notes, it's sort of pigeon notes that you then go out, collect and 
write it down properly later. And this habit, because you're making quick notes as you're designing, because you want to keep on with the design. But sometimes we don't write down quite enough. Now, it's not deliberate, it's just absent-mindedness as you're going. And this can show itself during the testing. I mean, I won't lie, the, the testing process can be pretty brutal. You can come back with all these comments and you're left wondering, what on earth was I thinking trying to write this pattern? Clearly, I'm not up to it. But that's just mind monkeys talking because... No one likes their work being critiqued. It's, it can be a bit um, disheartening when you get lots of comments coming back. But it's just a part of the process. It's what you have to go through. And it's better to get this done before it's published than having to re-edit and correct a ton of mistakes afterwards. You want to get everything sorted and, you know, nicely, professionally done and edited before you press that publish button. There is nothing worse than having to send out a re-edit after you've already published and admitting to those people that have already bought that, yeah, I made a mistake, didn't get spotted, sorry. I mean, that happens. Sometimes things just get, you know, they just slip through. Well, that's just part of the process as well. It's unfortunate, but it happens. And I, unfortunately, I've got a habit of having first day re-edits after my publishing goes out. And it's always something silly as well. It's becoming my little tradition. And as annoying as it is, it's predictable. But it's always something daft that just didn't get spotted. It could be as simple as... Um, a photo was missing some text because I've accidentally used an old photo. And again, even when you're doing your checks before you publish, it's things slip through because you know what you expect to see and your eye just doesn't catch it. But imagine how much will slip through if you didn't test. If you look at like some feedback in some well-known patterns in um, crochet groups. Some patterns are notorious for being filled with mistakes and they've never been corrected. And that really does take a toll on the reputation of the, of the designer. You don't want that reputation because it does stop people from buying your patterns. It does make people think twice about buying your next pattern, wondering if it's going to be filled with the same issues. You want your patterns to be good. You want them to be as correct as possible and as easy to follow as possible because that helps build your reputation. Because, you know, crochet groups are full of chatter and crocheters talk to each other. I'm sure you do it. You know, you get into a community, you're all chattering away and even if you're not joining in the chat, you're watching it. And these chats will spread the word and can be the making or breaking of a pattern designer's reputation. So you want to get the reputation of having well-written patterns with clear instructions that have everything they need in them for your design to be recreated as perfectly as the picture. That's what people want. They want to be able to read your Recreate your design exactly as shown in the picture. And your instructions have to deliver that. And so when people are asking for advice in crochet groups and asking for recommendations for patterns, someone may recommend your pattern and someone may come along and say, actually, don't buy that. And when that when that's chat starts... If you have patterns that are filled with mistakes, it's going to start coming out. People are more likely to comment negatively than they are positively. It's just the way it is. 
And so you don't want the, to give them reason to do that. You don't want your reputation to fall, to come down, because you didn't go through the step of testing your patterns. Pattern testing is essential. You should never, ever skip that step. Because it's the one that is really going to trip you up. Anyone can write a pattern down. Anyone can create a design. Anyone can publish a pattern. Anyone can sell a pattern. But can they get through the testing process, take those edits, re-edit, and go through this kind of painstaking process of sourcing out the details? If you don't do that, you're going to get a bad reputation because the mistakes will come through in droves. You will be amazed at how many mistakes you can make, even in the simplest, smallest of patterns, just because you read what you expect to read when going through your pattern yourself. You see what you expect to see, not what is actually there. We are blind to what is actually on the page. So you have to test. Never ever skip that step. Because testing is the difference between a good pattern and a great pattern. It's the difference between people going, yeah, it was okay. And others going, that was brilliant pattern. I never had to ask for advice because it was so clearly explained. That's where you want to be. That's the level you're aiming for. So never ever skip the testing process. It is the worst thing you can do for your reputation as a designer. So I hope that's given you some things to think about. And if you have any questions about the testing process, come to our Facebook group. It's a free group and you can ask away and get the support you need from fellow designers. But if you are on the journey to start writing your own crochet patterns, then come and take a look at the Hookers Academy. It's my membership where we talk everything about writing, selling and profiting from crochet patterns. The links are in the show notes. Come and take a look and join the community and get all the support you need. So thank you for listening. And I shall see you next time for the next episode. Bye for now.